Hello everyone and welcome to another Dashboard Gear quick tip. Today's topic is uh, kind of bridging that gap between the technical side and, and those of you on the business intelligence community. Today we're going to be talking about link servers. Now I'm specifically going to be talking about SQL Server link servers, which um, there are uh, similar concepts in other database platforms, but uh, Dashboard Gear, we primarily use SQL Server as our target server. Now, what a link server is, is a way that you can query another type of data from the existing SQL Server. So maybe you're on your uh, SQL Server data mart and you want to query data out of Infor that's in Oracle or Infor in DB2 or out in the cloud or maybe you want to query data out of a spreadsheet. Anytime you want to get data off of another uh, data source that's not on the SQL Server, you can create what is called a link server. So I'm going to go ahead and, and jump over to SQL Server Management Studio. Now, to create a link server, what we're going to do is we're going to go to server objects on SQL Server Management Studio. Now, I'm just logged into my laptop here just for illustration purposes, and I'm um, going to show you that underneath server objects, there's a, a topic here called link servers. And if I expand that out, you're going to see some garbage ones I kind of set up here. But if I right click on the title called link servers and say new link server, what it's going to do is it's going to ask me to create a server connection. So what we're going to do is you give it a name. So I'm going to call this, maybe I'll call this blah. That's so exciting. And now I'll give it a little more user friendly. I'll call it M4 um, data. Um, you can specify that it's SQL server type or another data source. I usually don't use SQL server unless I'm absolutely positive it's SQL server and it's, uh, and it's um, on my local network and close. And the reason for that is if I say SQL server here, it's going to assume that the link server name I put in here is your actual SQL server name. You don't have to do that because what I can do is I can call it whatever I want here and say other data source and just select Microsoft OLEDB provider for SQL server. You can have other data source connection types. So anything that you have a pro provider for on your machine, you'll do that here. Now, the one caveat I want to stress there is um, make sure that if you're running SQL Server 64-bit, you install 64-bit providers. That's a common uh, issue we run into with some of our customers. They'll set up maybe Oracle client uh, on here. You need to install the client of what you're connected to in here. Um, and so if you're, let's say, running Oracle on another server, you need to make sure and install the Oracle 64-bit client in here to match that. Because unless the, the 32-bit or 64-bit matches your instance of SQL Server, it won't see it. So install the 64-bit uh, clients for most of you today. Um, so then you, you pick your provider that you want to do. In the product name, um, each provider will give you some different documentation, but for the most part, you can type in whatever you want as long as there's not spaces. So I usually type in SQL Server, Oracle, DB2, um, just something that's the product name. Um, there has to be something in there, but it doesn't, doesn't necessarily use it for anything. The data source is the name of the server that you're connecting to. Now, this can be an IP address. So those of you that are running data out in the cloud, for instance, if you have your database in the cloud, you can just put an IP address here and it'll connect that way. Or I'm just going to play a little game here and type my laptop directly, treat it like it's another server. Um, so you can connect back yourself. But this can be any any server that's out on, you know, available via this provider. Now, a catalog is the name of the database. If you wanted to default to a specific uh, database, you can do that by typing it in here. Or if you just leave it blank, it will, you know, get you to whatever databases you have on that server. You'll notice down below here it says database name optional. So I'll just leave it blank. So right now I have a link server called Infor. The next tab is the security tab. So there are a few different security options here, and I'm really not going to go uh, through too many of them. The two most common scenarios that you're going to use is you can either add a mapping up here where you add, you map whatever a local ID is. So let's say I'm logged in as Rich B in my case. I could map my Rich B login to 
a user ID and password that would work over on the other server. So you can log map specific IDs to specific logins on the other server. Or if you just want to do it a little more generic, and it's actually the easiest thing to do, is just say, anytime I want to connect to this link server called Infor, it's going to log into that server down here as, as a user ID. So I can just type in you know, some user ID uh, that will work on there. And if I say OK. Now, it will add it to my link server list over here. Now, what you can do is usually if that didn't work, you're going to get an error message right away. Uh, sometimes it'll add it without the error message, but you can also right click on that server once it's added and say, I want to test the connection and it'll tell you whether it succeeds connecting or not. Now, once you have that server created, actually, before I show you how to query it, um, one other kind of note for those of you using Oracle uh, as a provider, um, one common thing I've seen is you create it, you're unable to query anything. There is on each of the providers um, extra options you can do. So for instance, on the SQL Olay DB, if I do properties, it's gonna show me extra properties that I can set and which link servers are using that. For Oracle, make sure that you check this allow in process. It needs that in order to uh, query the data for, for whatever reason, you'll get unreliable results without that. So after you um, add your link server, just make sure that, or even before you add it, uh, just go to the provider for the Oracle provider and make sure this allow in process is checked. And that's usually uh, cures up any issues that you have with it. All right. So because I'm querying SQL Server, I don't have to worry about that. So now I have my link server named Infor. How do you query or use that link server? Now there are there are a few different ways to do it. I tend to fall in a category of using what's called the open query method. So what does that mean? It means that I can say select star from, and normally you would type in a table name here uh, to query, but how it works when you're querying another server is you say, I want to do open query on my server name that I'm querying. So in for in my case, and then I say comma, and then in single quotes, I type a query that I want to run on that other server. So I could say select star from, let's say the database lots and DW dot the schema, and then the database, I'll say it's companies. So I can do that and then a single quote and a parenthesis. So what this is saying, and I can go ahead and run this, and it queried my company table. So what this did was it ran this query on this server. And the reason I'm highlighting that is, is it ran that query on that server, and these are the results it selected from that query uh, result. The reason I highlight that is there's actually two queries going on. One is it runs it on the other server. The second query is selecting data from the results of that other server, and that's what this is. What I wanna highlight is the query right here that's on the select from at the left-hand side is running on SQL Server, and that has to be SQL syntax, SQL Server syntax. This query that's here is running on your target server and it has to be whatever query syntax that understands. The reason I highlight that is if you're querying a spreadsheet, for instance, you need to issue a command that a spreadsheet can understand. If you're querying, let's say, an analysis services cube database, you need to issue a cube query here and not a SQL query. So you do it in two different places. Now, a couple of tips when, when doing this is if I put a where clause here where I can say where company equals one, what that's doing is it's running this query over on the other server, and then it's running all this outer query, that with the where clause on this server. I don't recommend you put the where clause out here, but instead what you want to do is put the where clause clause on this inner query. And the reason for that is it's much more efficient because what this will do is it will issue this query on the Infor server, filtering it over there, and then it'll give me the result sets. So in this case, it'll return one record uh, back from that 
the Infor server and then query it versus all of the records and then filter it down. So whenever possible, use the where clause on the inner open query. Now, I had mentioned at the beginning that there's different ways to do that. I have found some data sources that don't like um, this open query syntax for whatever reason. Most of the common ones, whether they be Oracle or SQL or DB2 or those, this works just fine. But there are a couple data sources I've run into where open query uh, has issues. And there you can use what's called the four part uh, query syntax. And what that is, is where I can say select star from, I can put in the server name without the open query and then say dot and then loss and DW dot DBO dot companies. Now this looks simpler because it uh, has, um, you know, less text to it, does the same thing basically, uh, or returns the same result, but it um, is using this four part where it's the server, the database, the schema, and the table. The negative of this is it is doing a lot of this work over on this server. So it's issuing the command over to the other server, getting all the results, then trying to do more work on, on uh, your source server or your target server here. So just make sure that um, this is a, a point of last resort. I usually don't use that wherever possible. I use the open query. So basically those are the two most common methods to query a link server. So you create your link server and then you query it with open query. Hopefully you found uh, today's session useful. So if you ever do need to query another server, you can uh, go ahead and do that. And uh, as always, if you have any suggestions for future sessions, feel free to uh, email us at info at dashboardgear.com. And thank you for joining us today.